Alright guys, how are you all doing? And welcome to the 11th episode of my Udinese career mode. And as you saw there, straight off, Badu accepted his contract, which we offered him uh, last episode, I believe. And we do also recall Eden Ellison from loan as Weidmer is injured and Clinton Najai is injured, so we don't really have a right mid. I also go ahead and recall Lewis Muriel uh, from loan. He has grown three levels this season, so I thought he must be doing something right. So we do go into our first game in the Syria. And this is probably one of the biggest games uh, for this part of the season. We are at home against Fiorentina, who are a very good team in Italy. Um, and they are currently sitting in 4th position, I believe. Yet yeah, they're in 4th position, we're in 6th position. Uh, so, if we win this, I mean, we do still have a chance of climbing into the Champions League spot. It's going to be very hard. But this will be one of the uh, like most important games we need to win. Now, as you can see here, we do line up with the 4-3-2-1. Muriel up front, Braithwaite left forward, and Eden Ellison right forward. That is the reason why I, why I recall uh, Muriel and Eden Ellison. Um, we've got a very good attacking threat now, so I was hoping to score a couple of goals. Now, they lined up as a 4-3-3. They do have Mohamed Salah and GSCP Rossi up front. Oh, Salah's on the wing. Uh, they've got a few other players like Insigne, who are very good. Now, in the 16th minute, we do start off with some nice passing. However... To stop the passing movement, they slide tackled Eden Ellison. And would you know, we've recalled him from loan. This is his first game back, and 18 minutes in, he goes off injured. So I was really hoping it wasn't a bad injury, because 18 minutes of game time for Udinese, he's injured, not the greatest. But in the 31st minute, we do have a good chance with Dina Tale. Unfortunately, Neto, the Fiorentina goalkeeper, makes a brilliant stop and tips it over the bar. And from the resulting corner, we cross it in with Allen and we get it on the edge of the box with Garbot. Garbot has a shot. Unfortunately, Neto is there to save it again. Now, in the 38th minute, we have a free kick 38 yards out. However, I do pass it. I don't decide to shoot and it comes to Braithwaite. And in the 38th minute, one of the most important games of the season at this stage... Braithwaite makes it 1-0 and he has scored another goal as he has been doing all season so I was very happy with that. It was a nice free kick tactic to be honest. Passed it short and then passed it into Braithwaite. Braithwaite turned his man and just put it past the keeper and that is his 21st goal of the season and that is how it ended at half time. Uh, going in 1-0 which would be very good for us and I was hoping to add to that lead uh, with a couple more goals in the second half. Now, in the uh, second half, we do manage to have a shot of Braithwaite. Sorry if I was silent there. I, I almost burped. Um, but yeah, in the 56th minute, Braithwaite, he comes forward again. He is on the left wing. He stops, takes around a few players, using his pace, using his dribbling to get past everyone. And he does have a chance to shoot. However, the defenders make a good block. They're sitting very deep, as you can see, uh, on, the, on like, the mini radar at the bottom. And we do have another shot in the 69th minute, but Neto makes a good save. However, in the 90th minute, they have a cross, and GSCP Rossi reigns on our parade, and he scores with a header, and honestly, I was so mad at this point. I don't usually get mad at career mode, but I knew how important this game was. If we win this game, we have a chance of getting into the Europa League. We have a chance of even getting into the Champions League. However, GSCP Rossi makes it 1-0, and that is how it ended. So we do only get a point. For me, that's two points dropped because we were leading 1-0 up all the way up to the 90th minute and then they scored. And look at the stats. They had one shot on target. We had six shots, five on target. And then I come out of the game and Eden Ellison is out for three months. So, like, we literally... It was just a problem, the right right forward position, right mid position. All we had was uh, Bakuna who can play right mid. So I did change to the 4-2-3-1 uh, for this. Because of fitness reasons and also because of our right mids, I was waiting because I'm um, pretty sure Weidmer was close to, close to coming back from injury. And as you see, we are sitting in the uh, the champion, not Champions League, the Europa League spot um, on goal difference, that is. So it's a very, very close uh, race for the Europa League spot. And I think that's where we're going to have to end up in the Europa League spot. But we'll have to see. Um, and we are against Chievo Verona. I hope I'm saying that right. And uh, if you <laughs> if you look at this, when they are walking past, the lights were literally going through their head. That was a weird FIFA glitch. However, 
We do line up with the 4-2-3-1. As I said, we've got very good three cams. Got Dino Tale leading the line. Halberg and Jankto in the centre defensive midfielder's role. And we do have Weidma, who is uh, um, playing a right back. I guess he came back from injury before. I'm not quite sure. I've I've completely lost it of injuries. Like I don't know who's injured and who's not. I really should. But in the first minute, or I guess you could say the second minute of the game, we go through from kickoff and we managed to score against Chievo Verona 1-0 in the second minute and this was the best imaginable start I could ask for. I wanted to get a good result after that one all draw against Fiorentina and Zapata goes through in the second minute, first minute and uh, he does indeed make it 1-0 and that was the only highlight from that half. There was literally nothing else which happened. Now in the 62nd minute we get a penalty so I'm not quite sure. It it was like really weird this penalty. The the referee he points at the spot usually. He kind of just ran into the box and was like, "Yeah, you can have that penalty if you want." It was a really weird penalty and I still don't know how it was a penalty. I mean, yes, he clattered into us, but he got the ball first and it wasn't really a goal-scoring opportunity and wasn't really anyone in the box and I don't think it was a penalty. And the referee, he said it was, and he even, he, it looked like he didn't even know. He just walked into the box without his arms pointing at the penalty spot saying it's a penalty. He's just like, I don't I don't really know what happened here. This was just a FIFA moment where you, you just can't explain it. It's just EA really, isn't it? But we do have a chance to make it 2-0 with Dino Tale from the penalty spot. And he puts it in the bottom left-hand corner, and we do indeed take the lead, or extend our lead, uh, to make it 2-0, so I thought that was pretty much game over, 2-0, Chievo Verona, not the best team, we are on form, well, we're not on form, but we're playing good in this match, and in the 73rd minute, they almost proved me wrong, they almost got back in the game, however, we do indeed win 2-0, thanks to Zapata and that ridiculous penalty, uh, but we do score it, and Di Natale made it 2-0, now, we do go into our next game, We've already had Fiorentina this game, or oh, this episode, which was a very hard game. Now we've got AC Milan, so we've got a few big games in this episode, which we really need to win. And it's not the greatest having these big games in the run-in uh, for the end of the season. As you can see, we are still fifth, three points ahead of Torino, four points ahead of Inter, and uh, I think that was six points ahead of Lazio. And Milan aren't doing too hot in this season. I believe they were nine. I think that's what I said. Now we do come into the next game and we do have Weidma there in the right forward spot. Finally got him uh, like as a replacement. So I'm hoping that he can do well. He did well early on in the season then he kind of died off a bit and now he's come back. I'm hoping he can uh, reproduce what he did in the first half of the season. Now here's how Milan lined up. A false line with Serchi being that uh, full striker that sent forward. Uh, they got Honda on the right wing, El Shirawi on the left wing. Now, in the seventh minute, they do come uh, through, come attacking, and they cross it in with Serchi, but we managed to header it away. However, we didn't really clear our lines that well, and Serchi manages to get a shot off at our keeper, and Carnezes makes a good save to deny Serchi. As you can see here, he just took the ball off. I think I was Braithwaite in the box. He just took the ball off him and managed to get his shot off in the, on net. Now, from the resulting corner, they do have Montalivo to try and cross the ball in to see if they can get a goal. And they do manage to do this weird passing movement. Like, I thought they could have shot a lot earlier and probably had a better chance on goal. But they do a really nice passing movement. And it finally comes over to Bonaventura. However, he hits the side netting. Now, in the 45th minute, we have a shot with uh, Braithwaite. Diego Lopez saves it and Weidemann could not follow up with a goal from the rebound and that is really all that happened in that first half we kept it a nil nil at home now in the 54th minute just 15 10 minutes after the restart we put it through to Allen and Allen how has he not scored that Diego Lopez with one of the best saves I've seen and really that is all that happened I mean this game was not that exciting it was more of a battle in the midfield and we do come back and see that Clinton Najai has returned from injury so He'll have that plaster, so I probably won't play him for two games, uh, but we we can play him now, and he can become our new right forward once he gets fully fit. Now, we do have our last game of the episode against Inter Milan, so we just played AC Milan, now we're playing their rivals, Inter Milan, 
And I was hoping for a better result than the nil-nil we got previously at AC Milan. And as you can see, this was also a very big game. We closed the gap to Fiorentina with just four points. And uh, Inter were on 49 points and we were on 51 points. So, I mean, if we beat Inter, we are pretty much guaranteed a place in Europe. Or at least I would hope so. It depend, depends on the uh, results to come, whether we have a really bad run of results. But here is how Inter lined up. They have a very good team. As you know, they've got Handanovic in goal, Palacio, Ricardo up front. They've got Freddy Guarín, they've got Medel, Kovacic, Kov Kovacic, yep. Uh, they got Nemanja Vidic, so they've got a very, very good team uh, for this league. And I was using my second team, I think. So I was hoping that I could try and try and get a result with this second team, at least a draw. Handanovic makes a brilliant save in the 24th minute to deny Di Natale. Now in the 33rd minute, they go through, passing it nicely with Guarín and Akadi on the ball, passing it to Kovacic. However, our goalkeeper Karnezis makes a good save. Now in the 36th minute. They come through, they cross it in, and uh, Canezas has to make a brilliant save, full stretch. And Icardi should have put the uh, the rebound, I guess you could call it. He should have put that on target and challenged the keeper. However, good defending from us made the block. In the 53rd minute after half-time, they do get the ball in the box. However, they do put it wide, and Canezas is not troubled by that shot. And in the 58th minute, Di Natale runs through. Really should have done better here, but a good save from Handanovic. Uh kept it at nil nil and we really should have scored there to be honest it was a brilliant effort uh, or brilliant chance even now Zapata shoots in the 74th minute however Handanovic makes another brilliant save and he keeps it at nil nil so we've had two goalless draws which wasn't that great we've had a one all draw so this is we're turning to the draw specialist really uh, but that's it for this episode here is the squad report as always but there is a question I want to ask you who is your best ever player on career mode? As in, who is your best regen or free agent who's not an actual person who you've found? I found this free agent, centre forward, Argentinian. He is now 93 rated. And you might think that that's Messi. However, Messi is still playing at the moment on my Sunderland career mode. So, yeah, it was a brilliant find. Let me know who your best ever find of free agent or regeneration or youth player um, you have signed in the comments below but apart from that that's it thank you for watching and have a brilliant day